Alrighty, today we are going to be reviewing a children's book by noted cult leader and fascist Ibram X. Kendi. I say that he's a cult leader because he actually says things like, if you don't listen to me and repeat what I say, then you are a racist and you can only be cleansed of your racism by paying me $20,000 to do a diversity session about how you're a racist. And also I say he's a fascist because he has literally proposed in writing that there be a federal department of anti-racism to strike down, I kid you not, any law that has a disparate impact, meaning that if any group does worse under a law than any other group, then the law can be struck down by the Department of Anti-Racism, which is called every single law ever in the history of humanity because you can draw a line down the middle of a room without regard to race, age, or anything, and you will end up with disparate impact on the people on either side of the line. Okay, so the guy is just a charlatan, he is a fraud, and he is highly sought after for diversity speaking initiatives at various corporations seeking to avoid liability. Okay, so he wrote a children's book, like a book for kids, so he can indoctrinate small babies in this book. So it's called Anti-Racist Baby. Looks excellent. Here we go. Okay, so the book begins with dedications. So Ibram Kendi writes like a nice dedication, presumably to his kid, Imani. And then the illustrator writes this. To all the young people whose own imaginations are unbound by the imaginations of state violence and white supremacy and the power we hold to build a world that is anti-racist, I believe in us. Yes, all your hope lies in the ability of a small child who has not yet been indoctrinated into the institutions of evil, but who unfortunately has no ability to wipe their own ass. Anti-racist baby is bred, not born. Okay, so how are we going to indoctrinate your child today? Because your child is going to be bred. Babies are taught to be racist or anti-racist. There is no neutrality. Um, what if you're just not racist? Well, according to Ibram Kendi, seriously, he actually believes that if you say that you're not racist and you don't do anything racist, you're actually still racist because you're not anti-racist. Anti-racist means that you believe that every institution that has a disparate impact needs to be torn to the ground. This is actual theory. So babies are taught to be racist or anti-racist. So either you indoctrinate them to believe what Ibram Kendi believes, or you are, right, he eliminated one of those options now. If you don't do an Ibram, if you're not anti-racist, like Ibram Kendi, that means your baby's a racist. Take these nine steps to make equity a reality. Ooh, I'm so excited. One, open your eyes to all skin colors. Anti-racist baby learns all the colors, not because race is true. If you claim to be colorblind, you deny what's right in front of you. Okay, so, um... That is so self-refuting. I mean, like completely self-refuting, right? He says that you have to learn everybody's color because race is not true. But if race is not true, why would you bother to learn everybody's color? Like, who cares, right? Either you're a racial essentialist, in which case you should know everybody's color because there are racial differences that are essential, which is racist. Or you should learn everybody's racial color for no reason. He says, if you claim to be colorblind, you deny what's right in front of you. No. What you deny is Ibram Kendi's premise, which is that you are, in fact, a racist unless Ibram Kendi says that you are otherwise, deems you otherwise. Two, use your words to talk about race. No one will see racism if we only stay silent. If we don't name racism, it won't stop being so violent. Yes, what we need is two-year-olds deeming things racist. That sounds great. I mean, as, as a person with small children, what I need is my children running around on the streets calling things racist when they don't literally know how to wipe their own asses. Makes perfect sense to me. Also, no one will see racism if we only stay silent. I, I'm, I'm confused just because I feel like we will still see racism. We just won't be speaking about it. Now, you want to make the case that we should speak out against racism. That sounds good. I'm, I'm all for it. But the problem is, again, he defines racism as anything Ibram Kendi doesn't like. Okay. Three, point at policies as the problem, not people. Ah, there we go. There we go. See, here, you are now removing the definition of racism. You're teaching kids that you don't actually have to be racist in order to be racist, right? Instead of your kid, you're teaching kids they have to point out racism, but in order for them to point out racism, they don't have to spot a racist or racist intent. All they have to do is find something they don't like and call it racist. He says, some people get more while others get less because policies don't always grant equal access. There is a person who is catching butterflies with the net and one butterfly is not caught. This means that this person is racist against this particular type of butterfly. Now, we have no idea why this person is catching that particular type of butterfly. Maybe they need to do research on that type. Of, it's a butterfly, by the way, not a human. Okay, number one. Number two, maybe it's because those butterflies are easier to catch and this person catches butterflies for a living. Maybe the person is evil and really, really hates blue butterflies. We don't know. But we can simply assume that because there is a disparity, discrimination has taken place. This is what we are teaching small children because everything is incredibly stupid. Four, 
shout, there's nothing wrong with the people. Even though all races are not treated the same, we are all human, anti-racist baby can proclaim. So the point here, right, and the, the subtle point here is that what he has said, and this is what Ibram Kendi has said in his writing for adults, which is also written like it is for children because the, only idiots would believe it. And children are, are basically small adults who are idiots. When he says there's nothing wrong with the people, what he means is if there's any disparity in outcome, you cannot attribute that to the individual decisions of the people, or you have to attribute it to the policies. So if you have one person who makes a bunch of bad decisions and ends up impoverished, or somebody robs a bank and goes to jail, it's not because the person made a bad decision to rob a bank and then ended up in jail. There's nothing wrong with the person, you see. It was the policies that drove him to do that, right? This is what we are supposed to be teaching children, which, by the way, is a great message for kids. I think a best, the best message for kids who lack a sense of personal responsibility in the first place and are really selfish little creatures. Kids are innocent, but they are not good. Anybody who's ever had a kid can tell you this, right? Kids can be horrific. Kids can be cruel to one another. Kids can be violent and brutal. If a four-year-old had the body of a 40-year-old, the world would be over, right? Four-year-olds just walk around hitting each other and screaming and pulling things down and wrecking things. Kids are wonderful. I have three of them, okay? They're wonderful. They're the joys of my life. They are not good. They're innocent. Okay, you have to teach them to be good. That's what civilization is for. Teaching a child that individual action does not matter, right? That there's nothing wrong with the people, what, meaning there's nothing wrong with your individual choice. No matter what your choice is, it should result in the same outcome is literally a way to bring up sociopathic children. Okay, five, celebrate all our differences. Anti-racist baby doesn't see certain groups as better or worse. Anti-racist baby loves a world that's truly diverse. Okay, so is he now claiming that we should see people as individuals? No, that's silly. Of course not. What he means is that no matter what choices anybody makes, we are not allowed to say choices are better or worse. He doesn't mean that we should see every individual without regard to skin color. We should see every individual based on content of character. He originally disowned that in principle number one, as you will recall. No, what he's actually saying is that individual choice literally should never be discriminated against. Okay, now here's my deal. I do discriminate based on individual choice, not based on skin color, not based on immutable characteristic, based on individual choice. If you choose to eat nails, that is a worse choice than not choosing to eat nails. Okay, I discriminate based on that choice, as would any sentient human being. But he is saying that you shouldn't do that, right? You should, every, every choice is equally good. And only cultural, only cultural racism is what causes you to think that some choices are better than others. If some people choose to eat nails, that's just a different culture, right? Six, knock down the stack of cultural blocks. Anti-racist baby appreciates how groups speak, dance, and create as they choose. Anti-racist baby welcomes all groups voicing their unique views. Okay, well, I just have a question. Are there any limits on this behavior, right? Because you're supposed to knock down the stack of cultural blocks, which means that presumably every cultural behavior is a manifestation of systems of power. Are there any, but there are no bad choices, right? This is what we're learning here. Anti-racist baby appreciates how groups speak, dance, and create as they, how about what if they're like burning down cities? What if they're like riots in the streets? What if people are hitting each other with baseball bats? Like, are we supposed to appreciate that? It's just sort of a cultural difference. Are we supposed to just think that if you make bad decisions, that's just cultural difference? And it's not a matter of unique viewpoint, right? It, unless he includes a non-harm principle here, this is a bad principle. Seven, confess when being raised. Ah, confess, confess, baby. Small baby, confess your sins. Teach your two-year-old to confess to being racist. Okay, I, I have a four-year-old. I can't even get my four-year-old to confess that he drew on the counter with a Sharpie. Okay, are, are you kidding me? Yeah, you're four, confess. Any, anybody who actually teaches this crap to their kids should be brought up on charges of child abuse, seriously. Seven, confess when being racist. Nothing disrupts racism more than when we confess the racist ideas we sometimes express. Okay, but again, he is defining racist as anything he doesn't like. So this is where the cult leader part comes in. He gets to determine if something is racist. If you refuse to confess your racism along those lines, this is because you are a racist and you must confess, confess, and give Ibram Kendi $20,000 for a diversity training session. Eight, grow to be an anti-racist. Anti-racist baby is always learning, changing, and growing. Anti-racist baby stays curious about all people and isn't all-knowing. Well, unless anti-racist baby grows up to be Ibram Kendi, then he knows everything. And he gets to change the standards just willy-nilly at random, depending on what he deems racist that day. What a, what a wonderful book. What a wonderful book. Nine, believe we shall overcome racism. But wait a second. I've been told that we can never overcome racism. Seriously, you, you, there's no ability to overcome racism. You can never fully do the work, is what Ibram Kendi says. We can only pursue the utopian goal. There's no point where utopia actually manifests. It doesn't happen. Because after all, we have to continue seeing each other as groups. And we have to create laws in which the outcome 
is the same for everybody, which is never going to happen ever. So you actually can never overcome racism because again, he defines racism as whatever he doesn't, I assume Ibram Kennedy will always have things he doesn't like. So the definition will continue changing forever. But I believe we can overcome. Anti-racist baby is filled with the power to transcend, my friend, and doesn't judge a book by its cover, but reads until the end. Oh, uh, we did. We got through it, guys. We got through it together. What a beautiful bunch of absolutely garbage horse for children. Okay, we'll get to more of this in just one second. But first, I need to tell you about something incredible, something unbelievable, something Raycon. Woohoo! Raycon is great. I know Raycon is great because I'm holding it here in my hand. And the Everyday E25 earbuds, these are the best ones yet. We're talking seamless Bluetooth pairing. We're talking six hours of playtime. We are talking about excellent quality that rivals any of the others on the market. And it's gonna cost you like half of what other wireless earbuds are going to cost you. So why aren't you checking them out right now? Raycon offers their wireless earbuds in a range of fun colors and patterns. They are super comfortable. They fit your ear perfectly. You can actually customize them to fit your ear exactly how you want them to fit. So they are not just one size fits all. The compact carrying case, it can charge your earbuds four times on a single charge. And unlike some of those other wireless options, the earbuds are both stylish and discreet. No dangling wires, no stems. They are great for video chats. So go check out Raycons right now. They start about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market. And they sound just as good. Great for working from home, working out, listening to music and podcasts for hours without driving your roommates or significant other or children or neighbors crazy. Go check them out right now. Click the link in the description below to get 15% off your order. Again, click that link in the description below. 15% off your Raycons. Oh. oh my God. Yeah, this is, yeah. This is learning time. Dear parents and caregivers, it is critical we begin explicit conversations about race and racism with our children from a young age. Just as we teach our kids to be kind even before they fully understand what it means to be kind, we should teach our kids to be anti-racist even before they fully understand what it means to be anti-racist. Those are not the same thing. Teaching a kid to be kind means not hitting other kids, means being kind of nice. Teaching a kid to be anti-racist means that you have to indoctrinate them that all institutions in society are suffused with white supremacy and exploitation. I feel like that concept not only is a bullshit, but it's kind of hard to convey to a two-year-old. Ask your child to describe the people in their friend group and yours. It is a fallacy that children are colorblind. Help your child explicitly name the race of the people around them so they understand it is not insulting or harmful to do so. We want to normalize discussions about race and remove the stigma around these conversations. Okay, now I honestly don't have a problem with, with my kid saying there's a black guy who cares, and that's true. Okay, it is important for children to name the race of the people around them so you can ask them what they think about those different races, why they think those things, and instruct them on how to understand racial difference as an imagined construct, but one with very real consequences. You want to teach them this. You don't want to assume children are a blank slate. This leaves room for racist societal messages to shape their understanding of racism instead. Okay, what if I don't feel like grilling my kid on what they think of various races because kids are dumb? What if instead I just say, right, there's a black guy. Right, there's a Latino guy. Right, there's a lady. Like, What's the problem with that? And then if my kid ever expressed something like, are women allowed to be X, Y, or Z? You say, of course women are allowed to be X, Y, or Z. Like that, that's just normal parenting. But the idea is you're supposed to grill your kid for their racist internals, and then you're supposed to re-educate them like right away. Help children understand that racist policies are, pro are the problem, not people. Ah, here, here's where we really go. You and your child can reflect on the racial makeup of your school or neighborhood. Are they truly diverse? Or do you live in a neighborhood or attend a school that is segregated? Help children understand that this is a result of racist policy and talk about how this affects which schools may receive more resources over others. Okay, so I'm supposed to take my six-year-old to school and be like, oh, that's because the administrators are racist and historically there was redlining in the neighborhood. Or I could, you know, assume that the kid is six. Like, it's fine to talk about all this stuff. I'm just wondering why it's necessary to do it with a four-year-old. Challenge the idea that all people are treated the same. It is common to share lessons like be kind to everyone with kids, but this reinforces the idea that racist acts are only carried out on an individual level and ignores that all people are not given the same access to necessary resources. Okay, so why should I not? I'm confused. I shouldn't be telling my kid to be kind to everybody. Should I be telling my kid to be an asshole to everybody? I guess I could, but I feel like that makes the world worse. It says, although we might teach kids anyone can do anything, we also have to teach them that racist barriers exist that stop us all from being truly free. Understanding this is the first step in helping to change it. Being kind does not mean that we avoid seeing race, but that we celebrate racial differences. Okay, that is a completely disjointed statement from the rest of that paragraph. But the idea that I can't teach my kid that anybody can do anything because I have to teach them that if they're a girl, if, if, I, if I teach my, my oldest daughter, actually there are structural barriers to your success. What do you think that teaches kids? What you're actually teaching kids is not to try. That's what you're teaching kids. The reality is that in America, it's a free country. For the most part, 
Anybody can do anything. That does not mean that there are not barriers in everybody's life. It does mean that we should work to alleviate those barriers. But I'm not supposed to teach kids that. I'm supposed to teach them the importance of the barriers, but not the importance of individual choice. This is bad parenting. Remember to talk to your kids about how people aren't just racist or anti-racist, but rather how their actions can be racist or anti-racist. Ah, so again, once more, it is not people that are the problem. It is merely the actions that are put upon them by society. Kids might understand how this is similar to when we say we don't consider them to be a bad kid when they do something wrong, but we must acknowledge that they make a bad choice. They have the opportunity to make a better choice the next time because we know that identity is not fixed. Being anti-racist is about what we do, not who we are, but hold up. I was told that individual choice doesn't matter. Seriously, he's now saying that you can make the choice to be racist or anti-racist. But I was told that I'm not allowed to blame people for their choices or to credit people for their choices. Society made me the way I am, so shut up, Ibram Kendi. Right, seriously, society shaped all of the forces around me. I'm not responsible for my own decisions. Except apparently I am. I get to decide whether to pay Ibram Kendi 20 grand a pop. So, good stuff right there. Thank you, Ibram Kendi, for this educational tour through stupidity. That, that was just, that was wonderful. I'm so glad that we read Anti-Racist Baby by Ibram Kendi. If you read this to a child, your child is seven times stupider and 23,000 times a worse person than if they never read this book. Okay, you should not read this book. This is a terrible book. I've explained to you step by step why this is a terrible book. That was How to Be an Anti-Racist Baby by cult leader Ibram Kendi. I hope you enjoyed it as little as I did. Well, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed that. If you want me to review any other masterful works of art from the political left, let me know in the comments below.